This is a data and designer advanced concept video and here we uh, look at the load on demand data. So uh, getting data with load on demand is useful when dealing with extremely large data sets where you can't uh, load the entire data set into the client and you want to only uh, then organize your queries to only return the data that is needed for each element so that you minimize the amount of data going across the network. Uh, with this approach, you can also pass parameters from the dashboard to the query so you get exactly what you want. And obviously, this will only work with real-time queries. So uh, let's look at an example of when uh, this is useful. So here I have the data in uh, Publisher, and in this designer, I have a dashboard, which is fairly simple, uh, but it's useful to illustrate our point. So here I have a sales dashboard. It shows total sales. It also breaks the sales down by a region, and you can also select, um, select a sector for which the sales will be filtered. Uh, now, let's, uh, this data works with a simple data view here. And let's assume that this uh, data set is extremely large. Now, what is extremely large? Um, it's, it's, hard to t it's hard to say and to draw an exact line what it is. If, you have, if you're working with 20, 30,000 records, um, you're most likely fine. Anything above that, um, you know, it really depends on how much data, how many columns you need, you have, how much data there is. Um, you know, we even had dashboards up to a hundred thousand records working satisfy, uh, working uh, fine with, uh, in all, even with offline mode. But you know, anything you know, when you get over twenty or thirty thousand records, you really have to. Uh, try it out and see how uh, how it, it works and definitely anything over a hundred thousand records you really do need to uh, optimize the optimized data going across the across the network so this is a classic dashboard so uh, what we want to do is uh, create a uh, create uh, queries here which will reduce the data going across the network so let's see what we really need here um, here we have total sales, which really is just one value and a target value. So it's just two values we need here. Uh, this sector here, um, it's just a simple list of, uh, of uh, sectors we can select. And here, um, you know, even though there might be a lot of data, it's all uh, totaled up. So really, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven data points and targets. So really just 14 values that we're really interested here in here. So if you have really huge uh, data set, sets, we'll assume this has a million records, uh, you can sacrifice some of the flexibility but really speed it up by running in real time and only returning the data that we need. So how do we do that? Um, first of all, we need to uh, create queries for each of our uh, elements here. So we will create one query for total sales uh, we will create another query for uh, the sector and another for the chart to only return the data that we need. So let's uh, look at how we can do this. We will go to uh, uh, here to the data and control panel, and we will go into uh, into the into the queries to create some new data queries. Uh, so uh, let's say first uh, we want to create something for the uh, for the sector list. So we want to create something to just get the values for the different sectors. And really, all it is is you know get the distinct values from the sector name from our database that we're looking in. And you know we don't expect these to get uh, updated uh, very frequently. So let's just say we get it once a day. Um, and yeah, this looks about right. We can click on finish and that's it. So uh, that should cover the sector list. Let's get the total sales uh, here again. So we'll call this one just uh, total sales. And really, it is. We also have a target, but really, all it is is the sum of the amount, 
and some of the previous amount from the uh, from the table. So we'll click next. Oh, sorry. We want. Uh, let's say we want this to run real time because we want to get the latest uh, values. And these are the values we get. So we click on finish. And finally, we want uh, data here, specific data for this chart. Now this chart shows sales versus target, but it breaks it down by each uh, region. So uh, what we want here is a new data field, which will return the sales by region. So we can call it by region sales. And really all we want to do here is select the region name, uh, the sum of the amount and the sum of the previous amount from the database and group by region name. Uh, now that's it. So now we have all our data sources configured and that allows us uh, to basically, if we hook this, all these controls to the new data sources, that allows us to reduce the amount of traffic going from the server side to the client. So we don't have to send a million records, but just a handful of them to get all these controls. So now the only issue is uh, what happens when a user makes a selection? Because the way this dashboard works is that a user can select, make a selection, and basically all the data shown by the chart and the total is filtered based on that selection. So how do we accomplish this? And uh, this is where parameterized queries uh, come into play. So basically, uh, all of our uh, queries, let's take this by uh, region sales. Uh, what we do is uh, we want to, first of all, make it a real time query and then define a parameter here where uh, this parameter uh, will be passed in from the dashboard. So uh, the query can take a parameter within it and only return the results based on this parameter. So let's say uh, in, in, in our dashboard here, uh, we have this sector here, which a user can select. So what we'll do here is we'll define a parameter called sector, it's of type text, and for default value, we'll give it a percentage uh, symbol. This is basically um, transact SQL um, character, which uh, means all values, so that we're, when we're matching something, uh, we match all values. And this is the default value you want. We won't, don't want any filtering. So basically, we'll define that. We'll go back. And in our query here, we have this uh, add sector available parameter. So uh, what, uh, what we can do here, um, Uh, is add uh, add a claw a where clause, and in our case the where clause is basically this looks a bit more complex than it needs to be. I'll explain why. But basically we're saying where sector name is like at sector, and we have this case statement here. Uh, the reason for that is because our sector selection list has this all. Um, option. And basically what all does, it returns an empty string. So what we're trying to do uh, in this query is say basically if we get an empty string, then we want the percentage, the transit SQL to match everything, otherwise the actual sector that was passed in. And basically this query will just match um, uh, everything that uh, uh, make sure that return only the results for the sector name which matches this. So we'll configure this and obviously it works the same way because we're filtering everything. And we'll do, so we've just configured this for um, the total sales and we'll do the same for the sales by region. So we'll edit uh, sales uh, by region sales and Oh, sorry, I did edit this. So we want one for total sales. Again, we'll say it's real time. We'll define the parameter called sector. It's text. Default value is this. We'll add it. And we'll 
we'll just add the where clause here, the same one. Click on next and finish. So we have our two parameterized real-time queries. Now we can go back to the designer and uh, configure, uh, configure this. So first we'll add the data. Um, we'll go to our data source. So we want by region sales, we want uh, total sales, and we want the sector list. Those are the three data sources that we created. So uh, the first thing we'll notice is that by region sales and total sales have this little P here. And what that means is that they're parameterized queries. So when they're getting executed, uh, we can pass a parameter to the dashboard. So what we'll do is we'll uh, click on this gears box and go to the parameters. And we can see this at sector uh, parameter here. And what we'll do is we'll pass the selected item from the sector dropdown. Uh, likewise for total sales. So when our queries get executed, they get executed for the selected sector. And now we'll just uh, reconnect not to the static dashboard, but to the to the to the parameterized ones. So uh, let's start with total sales. That'll come from uh, total sales, both the main value and the comparison. The comparison will be previous amount. Options, uh, that's fine. Sales by region. It will come by uh, from by region sales, region name, amount, and this will be previous amount. And options. Uh, we don't have to actually worry about filter. So this will come from sector list and it will be sector name. And one thing to note when, when if you were using real time queries, we don't need to do any filtering here in uh, locally because we're passing the parameters right into the queries and getting the results we want. And this is all we're interested in. So if we run our dashboard, first the first thing we'll notice is that when we click on something, it actually does take some time to load because we are going to the database. So it's not really instantaneous, but it takes about half a second here. But again, the amount of data coming across the network is really small. So uh, we, uh, it, 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 it makes it, it does make it faster in that sense. So, and as you can see in each of these cases, we have seven records here, one record here, and 10 record here, uh, 10 records here. So basically 18 records in total. And that's why that's makes, that's what makes it faster. So this is how uh, to do uh, load and demand queries. The key points are make custom um, data views for each control. So you only get the data that you need uh, and two, if, if you have a lot of records, uh, make uh, parameterized query. If you have filters, make parameterized queries so you can get your filters working. And these can be applied whether it's a time navigator or a selection list or whatever. Um, for more details uh, or a blog tutorial uh, about this, you can go to datazen.com slash blogs and look at the load on demand with parameterized queries. And here I go through a similar example, just discussing everything you need to uh, configure here.